Hello, welcome to chapter three. So now that we know how to find derivatives, we are going to actually start using derivatives to um, answer a lot of questions about the real world. And um, today we're focusing mostly on velocity and acceleration. So first we'll be learning quickly um, also to what higher order derivatives are. So that's the second derivative, but then again, mostly how it relates to velocity and acceleration. Okay, so derivatives arise a lot in the study of motion. So for those of you who have taken physics, you will be familiar with what we're discussing today in this note. Um, and just so you know, this first part is just the explanation kind of in general of what's going on. And then I'll be making a separate video for the examples um, just because it is kind of a long note just to break it up for you. So now that we have, uh, we know how to differentiate or find the derivative, we can take the second derivative as well. So this will allow us to discuss the applications of first and second derivatives to change as an object moves in a straight line. Okay, so everything we're talking about involves, is, involves objects moving in a straight line, either vertically or horizontally, such as a space shuttle taking off into space or a car moving along a straight section of road. So perfect for Essex County. Um, so the derivative of a function represents instantaneous rate of change of that function. So an object that moves in a straight line with its position determined by time, S at T. So when you see this, um, S at T, it will be, sorry, I just have to get my ink here. Uh, when you see the S at T, that refers to the position with respect to time, okay? So anything with that position is determined by uh, the derivative. So velocity, so with the speed with direction, is determined by the, the first derivative of the position function, which can be denoted by S prime at T or DS dt, okay? So this derivative communicates how much s moves with respect to time um, and in what direction. Okay, so we can assume the motion along a number line, which gives the origin of reference and a point of negative direction. So if this was our, our position function, let's think about what this would mean. Okay, so this is position to the right of a fixed point, And remember that speed is equal to the absolute value of velocity, okay? Um, so this has a position, so it starts at the origin, so at home, and then in two seconds, it moves six units to the right, and then over the next four seconds, it moves back to home, and then after that, it moves away to the right indefinitely. So we can actually represent this motion on a number line as follows. So if this is my position at t equals zero, I'm starting there. So you can write t equals zero and a dot. Okay, so this has nothing to do with time. All that's going on first is that it moves to the right and it should be a straight line. Normally I would use a ruler for this, guys. So a straight line until it hits six meters away. So that, we're gonna use an arrow to show direction. So it hits there at t equals two. Then it turns around and goes all the way back home. Okay, there's direction there. And that happens at t equals six. Sorry, that should say, I apologize. That should say t equals six. And then we turn around and it, it continues in this direction for all t greater than six. Okay, we can note a few other things, okay? Uh, at here, when it gets to there, it's changing direction. The velocity equals zero as it's changing direction, okay? You can see because if we had the slope of the tangent here, it would be zero. And as well here, velocity equals zero. Okay, in this section between zero and two seconds, our velocity is positive, it's greater than zero. And that's because the object is moving to the right or in a positive direction. And in this section here, velocity is negative. Okay, so it's so the slope of the tangent in this section would be negative, velocity of negative, that just means it's moving to the left um, 
or back towards home um, in that case. So it says here, when velocity is positive, the object is moving in a positive direction, so right or up at time. When velocity is negative, the object is moving in a negative direction, down or left at time. When the derivative, which is the velocity, is equal to zero, the object is either at rest or changing direction. Okay, so this is a really important concept to understand. This is velocity. I went through it rather quickly because it is a concept that's come up before. Um, and so I hope that you understand that. Now, acceleration is where we get a lot more complicated. So you might just want to pause the video, copy down the red, and then listen to me as I explain. So acceleration is actually the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, okay? And we denote it with A at T as shown here. I can zoom in um, with A at T. So basically this means how is velocity changing over time? So you can think about that as the speed, but it's not always the speed because velocity also um, um, includes direction. But if you want to just think about positive velocity for a minute, um, acceleration is how much you're, you're speeding up or slowing down. Okay, so if you were driving, you just got onto the 401 and you maybe entered the 401 at 60 kilometers per hour, acceleration would say how much faster are you getting? Um, so how much is your uh, speed changing? How much is your change of distance changing. So that's why it's a second derivative um, because velocity shows how much your distance is changing and then acceleration shows how much that velocity is changing. Okay, so we denote it with V prime at T or we think about it as the derivative of the derivative of the position function. This is called the second derivative and it's denoted in any of these ways. Okay, so S double prime T, D squared S, DT squared or DV DT. Okay, now, this, if acceleration is negative, that means that velocity is decreasing. If acceleration is positive, that means velocity is increasing. And if acceleration is zero, that means velocity is constant. So think about cruise control. You might want to make a little note here. This means like cruise control. You're going the same speed. So it doesn't mean you're not moving. It just means you're moving at a constant rate. But this is so so, so, so important what I'm about to say, and students often, often, often get this wrong or do not complete the full analysis when looking at acceleration. Acceleration being positive does not necessarily mean that you are accelerating, okay? Acceleration being positive could actually mean that you're slowing down. So you're like, uh, you're crazy. What does this mean? Okay, so let's think about when velocity is positive. So velocity is positive means that you're going at a certain speed in a positive direction. So let's say if you're going 10 meters per second and then you go up to 12 meters per second. Okay, that means that your velocity is positive and your acceleration is also positive because your velocity is increasing, which means your acceleration is positive. So in that case, you are accelerating. So going from like 10 to 12 to 14 to 16, you are increasing, you are speeding up, okay? But what if you are going in the negative direction? So you are at negative 10, okay? And then let's say your acceleration was positive. Well, if your acceleration is positive, that means your velocity is increasing. And from negative 10, how do you increase? You would go up to negative 8. So negative 10 to negative 8 is an increase of velocity, okay, even though you're slowing down. So you're going slower in the negative direction. So think negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. You're slowing down but your acceleration is actually positive since your velocity is increasing, okay? So how we think about this is if velocity and acceleration are working against each other, so one is positive and one's negative, then you're slowing down. If they're both in the same direction, then you're speeding up. 
So for example, if you're at an, if your velocity is negative, so let's say again you're at negative 10 and your acceleration is negative, so velocity is decreasing, so negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, you're actually accelerating just in a negative direction. So if velocity and acceleration are both positive, you're accelerating in a positive direction. If acceleration and velocity are both negative, you're accelerating in a negative direction. If one is positive and one is negative, you're decelerating, okay? So that is so, so, so important for you guys to understand, and I can explain it to you in more detail if you didn't understand. I know it was kind of a lot of me talking, um, and I hope maybe this next example will help you understand this. So I just set up this very basic example here of, sorry about that, of just quadratic motion. So remember, you have to think about that we are actually just moving along a straight line, either up and down or side to side. Uh, so we can take a look at this example here. So this is, this green one here is the actual function we care about. So we actually only care about it um, between zero and four, okay? So this is our distance or our position with respect to time. So at time zero, it's at home, then for the first two seconds, it increases in distance, and then for the next two seconds, it comes back down. So I would typically think about this as just, let's say, throwing a ball in the air. So let's say you have just a little person here throwing the ball in the air, so it goes up for two seconds, and then it comes, and then it comes down for two seconds. Okay. So what is actually going on here? So first of all, let's find um, our derivative, our velocity. So the velocity is the derivative of s prime at t. And if you go and find that, you get that it is equal to, you bring down, so you get negative 2 t minus 2 times 1 plus 4. So that um, gives you minus 2t plus 4. So that is this blue function here. So this is velocity with respect to time. So let's not even look at acceleration yet. So basically, this is showing where velocity is positive. So velocity is positive from here till here, so for the first two seconds. In this whole section, velocity is positive. It's above zero, it's above the x-axis, okay? So in that whole section, you can see that um, velocity is increasing, so that means that the distance is going uh, to, in a positive direction, so in this case, up. So you can see that um, velocity is greater than zero for t between 0 and 2, and velocity is negative for, we're just looking at the first two seconds here, so between uh, 2 and 4 seconds. We can have inclusions there. Okay, so, um, and we can say at t equals 2, velocity is 0 because it's changing direction. Okay, so our ball goes up, it goes down. Okay, so velocity, um, notice the velocity is positive and then it's negative to show up and down. But velocity is sloping down, so what does that tell us? Well, now we can look at acceleration. I don't know why, sorry, the color's not changing, I don't know why. So the acceleration then is the derivative of velocity. So that derivative is just negative two. What does that negative 2 mean? Well, that's the slope of the velocity. So that means that the, um, the rate at which the velocity is changing is a constant. It's always going down by 2. So that means that this entire time, the velocity is decreasing by 2. That's interesting. Okay, but that makes sense, right? Uh, so at, when we start, the velocity is 4 meters per second, 
Um, then after one second, it's two meters per second, then zero meters per second, then um, negative two, and then negative four. So does that mean that the object is always getting slower? Well, no, it doesn't. Okay, so we'll notice here that A at T is always negative, okay? But what can we actually conclude? Well, where is where are they the same sign and where are, where are they different signs? Okay, so between zero and two seconds, notice that velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. So that means between zero and two seconds, the object is decelerating, okay? Decelerating, I'm running out of room here. Okay, because notice, Think about it as you throw a ball up into the air, it's going to get, it's going, the distance is increasing, it's getting farther away, but at a slower rate. It's going to be the fastest when it leaves your hand, and then as it reaches its maximum point, it's going to slow down until it gets to the top. And then what's going to happen when it comes down? Well, from two to four seconds, so two to four seconds, the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative. So in this section here, it's actually accelerating. Even though they're both negative, even though acceleration is negative, the object is actually accelerating. It's speeding up because, because um, it's getting more and more, um, it's getting faster because velocity is getting more and more negative, which means the absolute value of velocity is increasing, which is speed. Okay, so this might be a lot for you to take in, uh, but I really want you to understand this section before you move on to the examples. That's why I'm doing this as a separate video. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned lots and you will learn more.